This is Cher Komisar for TheBestWaterFiltration.com. In other videos, I've told you about the negative effects of fluoride on the brain and the pineal gland. Research also shows fluoride links to bone cancer and to hyperthyroidism, whose symptoms include weight gain, muscle and joint pain, fatigue, depression, high cholesterol, and heart disease. This raises serious concerns about fluoride, especially if you have infants and children. It's interesting to note that normal daily fluoride intake of breastfed infants is negligible, less than 0.01 milligrams, because human breast milk contains merely a trace of fluoride, regardless of the fluoride intake to the nursing mother. The exact reasons for the limited transfer of fluoride from plasma to breast milk are unknown, but it's been suggested that the physiological plasma milk barrier actively seeks to protect the newborn human from the toxic effects of fluoride. This is confirmed in cow's milk, which also contains low levels of fluoride even when fluoride is added to the mother cow's food or drinking water. The point is that human infant development has always occurred in a virtually fluoride-free environment, even in high water fluoridation areas. This phenomenon lasts until weaning and the introduction of solid foods. That fact clearly establishes the potential danger of bottle feeding where unfiltered water from fluoridated areas is being used in the reconstitution of formula. To point out the seriousness of fluoride exposure in newborns, it's been noted that infants being fed reconstituted powdered formula using fluoridated water retain more than 50% of the ingested fluoride dose in their mineralizing tissues, including the pineal. If fluoride accumulates in the pineal gland during early childhood, it could affect pineal gland metabolism in much the same way that very high local concentrations of fluoride in tooth enamel and bone affect the correct metabolism of proper bone development. The exposure to fluoride continues throughout childhood, through juices, drinks, toothpaste, and a whole variety of processed foods, such as cereals, that use fluoridated water in their processing. Research shows that fluoride is accumulating in the pineal gland at a much, much earlier age than in previous decades. Abnormally high local concentrations of fluoride within the pineal affects its ability to synthesize sufficient melatonin, which should be normally at its highest production levels during early childhood problem doesn't go away after childhood. In fact, the soft tissue of the aged pineal contains more fluoride than that found in any other normal soft tissues in the body. And when the mean fluoride concentration in the hard, mineralized, or calcified part of the pineal was evaluated, it was equivalent to that in dangerously fluorosed bone. Those are bones experiencing fluoride poisoning, where the bones are actually falling apart. In people exposed to fluoride, the pineal gland contains the highest fluoride concentrations in their body. The question is how this impacts melatonin production in the aging person, when melatonin is so needed to provide healthy regenerative sleep, proper bone formation, and protection from cell damage. For more information about fluoride dangers, water and water filtration systems, please go to www.thebestwaterfiltration.com. Thanks, and I'll see you in other videos. Here's to your health.